Hey everybody, it's Nerdcoids once again with another product review. I've been doing a lot of them lately. And this one is another one of my, pardon joy, it's probably my second favorite instrument after my purple telly. And it's based on another Fender design, although this one is actually more of an official Fender. It is, and I've actually showed it in a few videos beforehand. Yes, I'm talking about my Squire Vintage Modified 70s Jazz Bass. And it's uh, with a maple fretboard on a maple neck. It's a two-piece, although they did a pretty good job. You have to look real close to see. So it's going to focus up. You might be able to see the seam right there where the binding ends. Yeah. Although they did, did a pretty good job of matching it up. And it's a two-piece maple. It's right down the middle. They did a pretty good job matching up the grain. So it looks like a one-piece. You can really see it's a two-piece. When you look on the back, that's where it, it's more evident there. Although in this light it really highlights it, but in regular light you don't see it. And of course you'll see it right there at the heel. Chances are these two pieces of wood, <coughs> excuse me, these two pieces of wood are probably from the same tree though, because the grain looks very similar on both ends. Beautiful neck. Uh, it has a heavily, well not lacquered, but it's a high gloss neck, just like the rest of the body. And of course you have your standard tuners that you find on most Squires uh, bass guitars. They're perfectly good, perfectly serviceable, they hold tune. And of course, as you probably know, I'm going to do an audio dem demo of this. It's going to be clean, just with a little bit of compression, just to bring the level up a little. And uh, you'll see it sounds absolutely great. I have this on this flat wounds. These are GHS uh, precision flat wounds. They're 105, 45 to 105s which uh, are usually the ideal uh, medium, medium gauge uh, for jazz and precision and they're perfect on this bass. These are Fender designed pickups although I think that they are probably the same type of pickups that uh, Guitar Fetish sell sells. They have cloth leads on them and uh, of course you have your typical jazz bass uh, control plate uh, which, by the way, leads me to the only criticism I have about this particular bass is the tone pot. Uh, I originally thought that it was the capacitor that was the problem, but it turns out that it's actually the tone pot. Um, the tone works, but it acts more like a switch. Like it'll be 100%, 100% until you get about the last third, and then suddenly the tone is off. Now, for somebody like me who's still learning this instrument and who at most is probably just going to record with it, like it's not an instrument I'm going to gig with, it's no big deal. I can emulate a tone control, you know, on my computer with an EQ setting, or I can do it on an input mixer if I really wanted to, and I can get some sort of a tone control on my little Behringer mixer. It's not as great as uh, what you would get on a capacitor. And I mean, if I really, really wanted to have a working tone, I could probably get myself a tone pot, you know, pay maybe five, six dollars for it. You know, I did put an orange drop in here, and it does, um, the tone roll off does sound more musical than the original capacitor that was in there. So, you know, in a way, it, it is improved. I mean, it's the only modification I've done to this instrument since having it since last September. Um, I love this instrument. It sounds great. You're going to hear it yourself. Um, I definitely would recommend this bass, this particular model, to left-handy left-handers like me, simply because we don't have a lot of choice in terms of uh, left-handed, especially uh, of the Fender variety, like. Right now, uh, well, affordable, that is, um, because right now the cheapest Fender type instrument we can get for us left handeds that are like precision basses or like uh, made in Mexico precision basses. 
Uh, they don't have any Squire left-handed ones. The only Squire left-handed basses they have right now are jazz basses like this. There's this one, and there's the uh, one that's uh, three-tone sunburst and basswood with uh, tortoiseshell pickguard, which is the one I originally wanted to get. Um, but uh, the... Um, the person that sold this to me, Jimmy, from uh, Jimmy's Music here in Montreal, in NDG, he said, go for the all-maple one. Not just because it's $30 more expensive, but it's better built than the one that's um, that's made out of basswood and has the three-tone sunburst and whatnot. And um, I have to say, I at first thought that this bass was not going to have a lot of deep-end response to it, and... Uh, as you'll see in the video, there's plenty of it. Anyway, I don't want to make this video go on too long, so we're going to get right to the demonstration. If you have any comments and questions, you know what to do. Put them below. Oh, and before I do go, uh, shout out to uh, R Rumbling Man. How you doing, Rumbling Man? I watch his videos. He does a pretty good job of explaining the different type of bass guitars that he has. He's got like a Gibson Ripper. He's got a Squire Precision bass. Beautiful bass, by the way. And he's an, he even has a five-string um, Squire Affinity Jazz bass. Oh, and one more thing I want to say before I go. These jazz basses... Um, a vintage modified series. Most of them are made in Indonesia by a company called Court, which uh, you may have probably seen. You know, a lot of metal bands use their instruments and whatnot for their designs. Well, they're the ones that make these instruments, and uh, I have to say, I'm very impressed with it. Um, I got this instrument mostly to learn on, but uh, from what I've been reading around uh, on the web and seeing demonstrations, this kind of instrument is just as good as a just as good as a fender. Anyway, enjoy the video. Well, hello there. Once again, Nerkoids with another product review. This time, of course, it's the Vintage Modified 70s Jazz Bass from Squire. Uh, this is probably my second, second favorite guitar. Uh, it surpassed the uh, VB01, the Spock Bass. It's my go-to instrument, although I have been working on both the Rosa and Spock uh, lately, so I haven't really had a lot of chance to play around with this one. Um, so we're going to get right into it. So here we go, finger style, both pickups on, tone all the way up. In fact, I'm not going to touch the tone uh, for the aforementioned reasons in the intro. And uh, all I'm using right now is just... Um, a limiter to come in it brings it up by about 6 db and um, all you're hearing is just pure pickups and uh, pure strings it's in a standard tuning of uh, e to g i believe yeah e a d g yes and i'm using uh, ghs uh, precision flat wound strings i absolutely love these babies they're extremely smooth to touch and they sound very smooth too as you can hear, and uh, play a little ditty for you. Okay, so that's with both pickups on. Now I'm going to take neck pickup or the middle pickup off, and it's just going to be the rear pickup, bridge one. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
It's not my favorite pickup, um, although it's good to fill out the notes and all that. I like both pickups put together. I find, especially when I play it up here near the edge of the uh, fretboard uh, of the neck here, uh, well, no, the fretboard, um, I'm able to get a nice punchy sound that sounds pretty close to what a P bass sounds like. In fact, that was one of my fears when I opted to buy this thing. I thought, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to be able to get that deep classic vintage thump that I really wanted to learn how to play. And uh, with this bass, I'm, you know, I can get it, not a problem. Anyway, speaking of thump, now we're gonna do the neck pickup. Sounds great. I still like... I still like both pickups together. Now, to do the classic thing is to put the foam right at the bridge. The trick is to put it right at the bridge. As close as possible, because otherwise if you put it too out, it'll mute it too much and also bring it out of tune. It'll screw up the intonation a bit too much. And you don't want to do that. You just want to be able to deaden. Because even though these are flat wound strings and they're about as smooth as you can get, still get some of those overtones that are less than nice to deal with. But with a little foam, this is what you get. get some harmonics even with the foam. I love that. All right. Now to use a pick. pick up down. Anyway, it sounds nice and deep, and uh, thank you for watching the Vintage Modified 70s Jazz Bass by Squire and Fender. 
This guitar is made in Indonesia, and I think it's a it's a great instrument. It's it's um, good for gigs and all that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Do as usual. Leave uh, comments and questions below.